the bed is across the <laughs> thoughts, baby. Recall on behold. It's you can never forget. Oh, you're the reading your off. You for the money, for the greater good, for Revacon. Solving your little crossword puzzles, doing your tasks, crossing names off lists, trying to become some sort of world detector. It won't make it okay. It won't put smoke back in her mouth. He's got no idea what he's in for. Cause beep, beep, beep. The ad Do it for the Good. You're up. Listen, there's something that's been bothering you for a few days now. It's a suspicion, or a feeling really, that things are not quite in hand around here. An earth-shattering deduction from your psyche. What will those guys come up with next? Every day, things seem to spin more and more wildly, out of control. The center isn't holding. And despite your efforts to moderate and contain these energies, things only seem to be getting worse. Oh sure, you've been making progress on your case, interviewing people, solving side tasks. But who's focusing on the big questions? You've got to find out who bears la responsabilité. The most awesome, terrible thing. It is human nature to crave la responsabilité and to deny it. That's why it must be distributed across many different organizations, agencies, offices, and portfolios. Harry, Harry, you're thinking about this too narrowly. La responsabilité isn't concerned with trivial questions like who killed who. It's about the real issues. The human welfare index, the price of staple goods, the transition to real democracy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This isn't some kind of dictatorship. You can simply seize la responsabilité for yourself. It must be given by legitimate authority. Like a committee. You don't need no stinking committee. You're the law. Really, Harry, you know in your lungs that true authority flows from institutions, not individuals. That's the single principle that separates civilization from barbarism. Technicalities. If you want your work to be accepted, you have to go through the appropriate process. There is always time to follow best practices. Once someone's decided to cut corners for the sake of expediency, who knows what else they're capable of? A little self-dealing? Only the most even-keeled minds in Martinez. Your half-brother, the lieutenant, is a natural place to start. Together, you'll be able to discover who has la responsabilité in Rivershaw. And, if necessary, you'll have the wisdom and expertise to assign it among yourselves. Most likely, your findings will be collected in a report which will be carefully reviewed by your superiors. Once they've reviewed it, those same superiors will produce a set of recommendations to be taken up at the next meeting of the Standing Committee. Rest assured, no matter what happens, it will be done through the proper channels. Good luck. Your report is eagerly anticipated. Yes? 
Ah, I'm glad to hear it, detective. I was wondering when we'd get to this very subject. If you ask me, it's high time for you to set aside these frivolous side tasks and focus 100% of your energies on the case before us. Why are you pronouncing it like that gentleman from the Institute of Price Stability? You know what? Forget it. What specifically are you trying to assign responsibility for? Ah, now I understand. Next, I suppose you're going to tell me you need to form a committee to assign this responsibility? Fascinating. And here I believed your recent turn toward moralism was just an act. In any event, I am just a humble law official. I may work under the moral intern's umbrella, but I'm certainly not qualified to serve on any committee. You know who might be, though? That Mr. Villedroin, the gentleman you met in the young man's apartment. If I were trying to get in touch with the coalition, I would start by seeking him out. But first, you might need to speak with his young companion. Now, was there anything else? Yes. Uh, um, um, I don't know what to say. Uh, <clears throat> perhaps... Uh, um, I'm really not sure about this turn of events. I may have preferred the mutton chops. They sort of seem to cover up the... Um... Either way, good on you. You are saying? the windows, especially with how there are no windows on the south side. This was to deal with. You officers, come to investigate the historic subtext of West Martinez? I'm Tran Heilostam. You must be Kim Kisuragi, right? I was just telling my son about this building. Not a lot of people realize the historic significance here. Very rich in hypertext. Nice to meet you. Yes, hypertext. Young Carp and the collection of cultural hyperlinks. Oh yes, so Mikhail. They had to deal with monitor glare, especially in the summer. They still had vector monitors back then. That was 49 years ago. So they didn't have windows on the south wall. No, I can't say that we've met before. But I've heard of Kim, of course. Mikhail, say hi to the officers. Mikhail's a little tired today. We spent all night trying to run Orbis on his radio computer. Have you heard of it? It's a programming language used in Grad. Quite tricky, but he wanted to play this Grad-made adventure program. We've been getting really into worms lately. The man speaks in the artificial cadence of a professor, or someone who's been on too many radio shows. But I assume you're not here for giant worms when there are so many real things to see. Just as I was telling Mikhail before, this is where the Coalition landed in 08. We could be standing on what is the most interesting landmark in Revachol West. This man is your half-brother. You feel it. But why? Well, get a load of this guy. He really enjoys his trivia. The Orbis programming language was named after its inventor, Victor Orbis, a cybernetician from Grad. They run Vox in the Occidental countries. Aha! What not a lot of people know is, this used to be the R&D department of... That's not... They... Still, Tricentennial was beating them in business machines. But Feld had an ace up their sleeve. Or should I say, there were the... It was here in my... Which is... He assumes something like a combat... Indeed. What? The 
privately? Unfortunately, all of this was built by Felt, even a boardwalk. While Pines built Martinez proper as a resort for their middle management, Felt built this side of town for R&D. Yes, they... A pleasure we... Perhaps remind... Yes, it's a low rate. Oh, um... Wait, is he saying that we... Tape computers. They... What's... A sure... It's a... I... The kid takes a peek. Actually, no. Buckle. Ten years ago. He did. What the hell is a Wompty Dompty Dump? The Wompty Dompty Dump Center for Contemporary Arts. <laughs> In fact, I'm not. But. Made of black fill. Very, very cool. Who knows? Maybe it was an act. But of course. <laughs> what else? No. Safe to. I'm, at, I'm sure.
And now if you'll just connect that here... It's done. I believe we are ready. We're ready to try, at least. Please put on these headphones. There should be two extra sets. I've configured the channel so that only your microphone is set to broadcast, officer. We'll all be able to listen, but anyone we reach will only hear your voice. You will need to transmit your connection request while I attempt to locate the warship's public frequency. You will likely encounter some interference, but it's important to keep transmitting your request until you're acknowledged. Ready? Then, it will be exactly like every other moment of every other day. I ask again, are you ready? Good. Beginning transmission. Go ahead, officer. You're all alone, out there, wandering a blasted heath, calling out to the night. But there is no reply, except for the buzzing of invisible machines. The lieutenant looks up at you with a nervous glance. Nervous for who, though, you cannot say. Try again, officer. Nein, Liebling. You can't make out a word of this gibberish. The rustling of dry autumn leaves, waves breaking at a distance, a thousand wings beating at once. Liebling, bitte. Er ist unser... It isn't gibberish. It's vulgar. Now please keep trying. Again? It's cold now. I didn't say anything, Detective. Someone has been maintaining it. The wiring has been repaired. An uncomfortable silence falls over the connection. It's been a long winter. Long and cold. I can assure you it's not my twin brother. Though it certainly does sound like me. I can't say with certainty. But it sounds very much like anthroponetic crosstalk. It happens sometimes when sending transmissions across long stretches of pale. Ah, yes, of course. It must be it. Outwardly, they both exude calm. But there's something disturbing about this thought to both of them. Naturally, halten die Psychologen für vollkommen normal. What else is there to do? Keep trying. But someone has been maintaining it. The wiring has been repaired. Dubois, please acknowledge. Liebling, bitte. Er ist unser einziges Kind. Where's Departure? Please identify. The signals are getting increasingly mixed. Plucking Archer's signal from this will be like isolating a single strand from a tangle of hair. It's not working. The crosstalk is simply too strong. I did not expect simply locating the signal to be so difficult. We must consider several variables. Local anthroponetic conditions, the sophistication of our transceiver, the quality of our connections, and the physics of our antenna itself. Fortunately, we have a more than adequate transceiver, so I do not believe it is causing any problems. And we are also unlikely to change our local anthroponetic conditions. So, the next step is to thoroughly inspect our connections. I did not expect... We must... For... And we are also unlikely... You need to climb up there and look at them for yourself. Someone has been maintaining it. Something about this setup seems dimly familiar. But you'll be damned if you know what you're supposed to do about it. Images of your body smashed against the pavement flood your mind. This is dangerous. That's true, but I can't leave my station, so it will have to be you. Then you might break your neck.
Your gloves give you a solid grip on the metal bar. This feels pleasingly familiar. You don't exactly cut a lithesome figure, but after several moments of scrambling, you manage to hoist yourself atop the monument. You're doing all right, detective. Just keep your focus on the task at hand. The connection itself is nothing more than a little braid of exposed wire wrapped about the hoof of the horse. A copper fetter, it cannot slip. The whole monument is covered in a thin but durable layer of oil and grime. It's obvious no one has cleaned it in years. It takes a few moments, but the alcohol gradually begins to break down the oils surrounding the copper wiring. Is this really the time, detective? It's all right, Lieutenant. He's simply cleaning the connections. Once the oils have been dissolved, you wipe off the connections with your sleeve and reattach the cable. Mm, it seems to have made some difference, but unfortunately not enough to alter the overall situation unser einziges Kind. Er kann doch auch nächstes Jahr... Short of changing the shape of the antenna, I'm not sure what else we can do from here. And the lorries are all jammed together, so that's unlikely to happen. Ideally, narrow the receiving mode so that we can isolate the warship signal and eliminate the crosstalk. But if you don't know what you're doing, of course you could just make it worse. What do you mean? You adjust the antenna manually, with your hands. I'm afraid we're out of alternatives. You're just going to have to go for it. She's right. The responsibility is yours, and yours alone. There's no turning back now. You are face to face with Philip III. The Bronze King looks toward the West. Something about his features seems bizarrely distorted. This faithful steed is in nearly as poor a condition as its rider. The sky is grey and overcast. Snow spirals all around you. Through the scrim, you can just make out the shadow of Coalition Warship Archer a few kilometers to the east. A few of the idle lorry drivers and strike breakers gesture at you with their cigarettes, more out of curiosity than anything else. From the window of one of the adjacent apartment buildings, an older woman leans out, her heavy breasts sagging. She yells a single word you can't make out, and then shuts the window with a violent thunk. like you're hearing through the horse itself. That's very good. Just a bit more to the left. Nein, Liebling. The signal is clear. The storm has passed. This is another voice, a live voice, on the other end of this invisible bridge you've established. Try it now, officer. Lieutenant Dubois, this is Coalition Warship Archer. We are acknowledging and accepting you. Aha! Excellent! You are connected. Now be quick. I don't know how long I'll be able to preserve the signal. This is it. You're finally getting to speak with those who hold real power. And by that they mean the ones with the guns and the warships. 
There is so much you wish you could ask. Your efforts have bought you some time, but you can't forget what you're really here for. Please be advised that you are speaking on a public frequency. What is your request? Hmm, that's difficult to say. We have a very particular view from our observation platform up here. Perhaps the best way to describe it, it is to say we have a very wide perspective, but not an especially detailed one. Oh, it looks quite lovely from here, even with the rain. From our portal, we see a rolling hillside, a public park filled with grand oak trees, men and women going about on horses. Ah, uh -huh. there are children running home to get out of the rain. The homes and gardens are quite beautiful, very near, like those in certain areas of Messina. Perhaps you are in a different part of the city? We've only recently been detailed to the Archer, so we are still learning the names of all the many districts. She needs to see you down here. That's the only way she'll really get what you're about. Martinez, Martinez. That is to the west, yes? To the south? Let us see. No, that cannot be right. That way is only sprawl. We were under the impression that Martinez was nearer to the bay. But now we seem to be quite turned about. We'll have to consult a map in the future. Now, was there something else? A very important question, with a very simple answer. We want humanity to endure. Beyond that, it may be said that we are the inheritors and stewards of Dolores Day's legacy. She was the greatest innocent, the single most consequential being to have ever lived. Her legacy touches every aspect of modern life. Very odd that you've never heard of this person, perhaps even stranger, that she seems unfazed by your ignorance. Immeasurable. It includes interisolary travel, three scientific revolutions, humanism, internationalism, the welfare state, and balance of terror theory. Nothing less than the intellectual foundation of our modern order. The role of the moralist international is twofold, to buy humanity sufficient time to perfect itself, and to patiently guide it along the road while protecting it from ideological highwaymen and eschatologists. It's an elegant idea, one of the cornerstones of the modern era. In short, it holds that durable, lasting peace is possible when the major powers are capable of inflicting unacceptable and irreversible destruction upon one another. Because no rational state is willing to accept the risk of such a calamity befalling its own people. All powers are incentivized to de-escalate conflicts before they reach the point of no return. For the most part, it has. The world is certainly not free of violent conflict. But in the modern era, we have made great strides to reduce its frequency, duration and severity. It was established by many of the same founding party members who elected Dolores Day, and who, after her assassination, dedicated their lives to the continuation of her political and intellectual project. The communists say they are the next dialectical step in an inexorable spiral of progress. They claim to have resolved the inherent contradictions of moralism and believe they're just one revolution away from establishing a humanist paradise. The fascists say they are both the ancestors of and the successors to the loyalism. In other words, they believe that Dolores Day's reign simply represents a glorious phase of expansion within a greater Franco-Nigerian heritage. They criticize the DeLorean project for accepting and integrating new peoples rather than forcefully subjugating them. And then, there are our prodigal cousins, the Vazan Social Democrats, who hold our same values and have even adopted many of our same rights and iconography though they persist in rejecting the umbrella of moralism. For some reason, it's the social democrats she sounds most exasperated with. We don't resent them. It's more that we are disappointed that they have chosen to emphasize certain points of dispute over broad areas of accord. She speaks of them like a family member she's abandoned hope of ever maturing. But of course, 
they also remain dependable partners in a number of centrist governing coalitions. The RCM exists under the umbrella of the coalition, just as the coalition exists under the umbrella of the Moral Intern. At the same time, the RCM is not exactly of the coalition. It's our understanding that the RCM's organizational structure predates the coalition. We believe it may even be modeled after the communal brigades themselves. There is some truth to that. But in a practical sense, it's the responsibility of the ethics divisions to ensure that both organizations are working towards the same ends. One now committed to upholding moralist values. Strange, isn't it? History is a river coursing ever downward. Occasionally, its course is redirected in mysterious and unexpected ways. Let us answer your question with a question. Have you ever seen evening fall over the old town of Atzbekterashi? The heart of the city, the old town, is a district composed of weather marble, comprising thousands of columns and arcades arranged around a series of grand plazas. During the day, it's a beautiful sight, equal to any of the great cities of Pericarnassus. But as the sun sets, the shadows cast by those columns and arcades weave together to form an integrate ombre lattice. When you see it, you suddenly understand. It was all built for you, for this very moment. The name at Vesperoskit means evening comes. For you, for all of humanity. Not only that, but you, you are also part of the centrist long plan. When you cross one of the open plazas, your own shadows is effortlessly woven into the great lattice work, a deliberate synthesis of humanity, art, and the natural world. Yes, it is. We grew up there. We have seen the lattice with our own eyes. In Messina, of course. Not only was it the site of Dolores Day's crowning, it was also one of the great cities of the Dolorian era, a glorious expression of humanity's highest potential. Of course, such a city does not spring from nowhere, nor does it endure without effort. Its construction was the work of many generations, and its preservation is an equally monumental responsibility. About 3,000 years. Of course, the number 3,000 represents the average of a great number of projections. The actual number might be closer to 3,250 or even 3,300, depending on the contingencies. It is, in all senses, the most moderate and reasonable projection possible based on current science. Liebling, bitte. Er ist unser Einz time is running short, officer. I estimate you have time for maybe two more questions. Come again. We're picking up more interference. You are currently speaking with Coalition Worthy Parcher, flagship of Insurcom Forces in Revachon. No, the captain of the Archer is deeply classified intelligence. We are the second signaler. Our name is not important. All you need to know is that we hold the position of second signaler aboard the Archer. You really don't have the faintest guess what her name could be. You were never very good at this sort of thing. There's something in the way she refers to herself, always with the first person plural. A deliberate blurring of the boundary between herself and the institution she represents. Not to mention the airborne artillery platform she works on. Her every word is backed up by the most powerful ordinance available. Because it's standard practice for signalers to use the pluralis officialis during the course of our duties. It's meant to serve as a reminder that we don't speak only for ourselves. For instance, as second signaler, we represent Coalition More Sibata, which in turn represents Insurcom and the Coalition More General, which in turn represents the Moralist International, which itself represents the interests of 1.2 billion people across the world. Meaning, she's the voice of all those living souls. It's an important responsibility, but we don't consider it any greater than those born by countless people all across the world. Now, your request? Officer, I've held the signal open as long as I can. Whatever you came here to ask, ask it now. Is everything all right? 
Acknowledged. To reach the committee, all you need to do is fill out the appropriate request form and submit it to the liaison for public affairs. If the liaison accepts your request, you will be invited to address the committee at their next quarterly public hearing. We believe the next hearing is scheduled for July. Not a problem. If this is a time-sensitive matter, you may file an emergency address request with the liaison for public affairs. They typically respond within a few weeks. We're afraid that is quite impossible, Lieutenant Dubois. We cannot transfer you to the committee because we are not entrusted with that responsibility. We are simply the second signaler. Then, why are you wasting time with her? You should demand to speak with who's really in charge. That is the nature of the command pyramid, yes. Most modern organizations work in a similar way, even the FCM. This line of argument is quite pointless. You should abandon it. This isn't about you. Not really. It may have been at a certain point, but you've let go of that perspective. This is about your responsibility to all of Revachon. Now, take a deep breath. Look upward. You don't have to bear the burden alone. What? How do you know this? What's your tone? Now, please describe the situation in as much detail as you can. We will forward our summary to the committee. There's papers rustling in the background. She's clearing her desk, preparing to take notes. There, you've wedged your foot in the door. Now, if you can show the Coalition how much they're needed, they'll have no choice but to intervene. Yes? Please continue. We have it. Is there anything else the committee should know? Detective, before you answer that, I urge you to weigh your words extremely carefully. We're afraid we must ask you to repeat that, Lieutenant Dubois. Uh, uh, afraid? What is she afraid of? Her tone has shifted. She's no longer herself. She's reading from a script. Your words have activated some sort of procedure. Acknowledge. Listen very carefully, Lieutenant. We are going to ask you a series of questions. It is imperative that you answer as directly and truthfully as you can. Do you understand? Good. First question. Are you currently in the vicinity of Seregli? the North Arcade Islands, or near Pale Offshore Platform, Insul Indico. Very good. Next question. Would you describe the phenomenon as internal to the Isola or external to the Isola? What she means is, actually, you have no idea what those words could mean in this context. Answer the question, please. Next question. At the time, did you experience sense objects? Yes. Examples may include sound, memory, light. Hmm. Let's go on. Final question. Were you alone? You are part of a large family. You are never alone. There's no need to overthink this. We repeat. Were you alone? You hear the sound of a page ripping. Thank you, Lisa. Please stand by while we transmit our summary. A long winter. I'm not sure how much longer I can keep the signal clear, officer. Lieutenant Dubois. This is Collision Worship Archer. Please acknowledge. Thank you for standing by. We are authorized to report the Committee of Responsibility for Ravashaw has acknowledged and accepted your request. They would like you to address your matter to the Committee directly, as their earliest convenience. Subito. 
Coalition Shuttle Laurel is setting a course for your position. They will arrive momentarily. Stand by. Snow again. It collects between the bronze horse's ears, along the bridge of the bronze king's nose, and on the backs of your gloves. So? They're really coming? The lieutenant slowly removes his headphones and turns up toward you. Well, what now? You've accomplished your side task. You've contacted Coalition Warship Archer. I suppose what I'm asking is whether we are about to lose you to the Moral Intern. What options? What in God's name are you talking about, Detective? The Lieutenant takes a moment to compose his thoughts. I don't know where this case will lead us, Detective. But in a sense, that doesn't matter. Our job is to follow the evidence where it leads. Consequences be damned. Because that's what it means to be an officer of the RCM. The lieutenant's final words are nearly swallowed by the roar of the aerostatic's main rotors. Lieutenant Dubois, this is Collision Worship Archer. We have been instructed to inform you that the Laurel arrived at your position. Please acknowledge. No shit. How are they supposed to hear your acknowledgement over the thundering of their own rotors? Thank you. The Committee of Responsibility for Ravishow has authorized us to offer you an immediate extraction. Do you accept? We are far past that point, Lieutenant. There is only one question now. I... The roundabout. Martinez North. Daytime. Across the plaza, a pair of seagulls fight over the remains of a chicken wing. The programmer eyes you curiously. She does not understand why you're hesitating. Whatever her misgivings about the coalition, the fact is that you've summoned an aerostatic with your voice. An achievement she never thought she'd witness. The lieutenant looks up toward you. He starts to open his mouth, then appears to think better of it. He's spoken his piece, he thinks. It's up to you now. There is something, a whisper, circulating among the city's footnoted alleyways and along its electrical wires. But what it's saying, you can't tell. It seems to be a message meant for someone else. Acknowledge. Laurel has initiated the extraction procedure. Stand by. Marianne hat mir erzählt, dass Oscar nicht mehr derselbe ist, seit er auf einem Lufttyp zurückgekommen ist. Weeks later. No answers about extracted cop. The condition and whereabouts of an RCM officer extracted by a coalition aerostatic two weeks ago remain unknown. The dramatic maneuver witnessed by dozens near the North Roundabout has reportedly increased tensions between the citizens of Martinez, the RCM, and coalition authorities. Early reports that the lieutenant was investigating anthropogenic phenomena along the coast have not been confirmed. According to an official statement given by the RCM, the lieutenant was in Martinez as part of a murder investigation. A coalition representative declined repeated requests for comment. <laughs> 